you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to
pages of my heart Let my worship begins and never end Oh, from the pages of my heart from the pages of my heart let my worship begins and never end let my worship begins and never end to the god of all flesh to the god of all flesh oh he's my god he's my god and his name is the hour I feel when I 
don't know. Because they don't know what you mean to me. What you mean to me. I said, why should I feel? Why should I feel? When I love you. shall the gathering of your people be. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for, for life. Thank you that we are counted among the living. We may not have all we desire, but we are still alive. We may not have all that we hunger for, but we're still alive. Our dreams and vision might not have been totally fulfilled, but we are still alive. The Bible declared that a living dog is better than a dead lion. Thank you for your word that is about to come. I ask that in the name of Jesus, that the mysteries that surround your word, the mysteries that surround your word, will open up to us today. Breathe heavily upon that word that we're about to hear. Let the presence of heaven be felt and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. What a day to be alive. Um, God's word is a changer. God's word molds. God's word restores. God's word is a lifter of men. God's word beautifies the destinies of men. And every time we hear God's word, we open our spirit to the hearing of God's word. Something supernatural happens in our inside. One of the most powerful secrets I have found is that when God is speaking, men begin to see pictures. Because the words of God are practically designs. They are designs that help us understand um, the pictures of how the future will become. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. 
Now Paul is admonishing his son in the ministry Timothy and he said to him meditate upon this body of knowledge that I give to you meditate upon this body of knowledge I give to you and give yourself wholly totally to them because when you do your profiting will not only be seen by you but it will be seen by all men around you and without in Luke chapter 1, Dr. Luke is writing to Theophilus and is showing him the basis for writing the synoptic version of the gospel according to Luke. And in verse 1, it says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. In other words... I do not want you to believe just because you respect the teacher. I want you to understand the basis from whence this truth came. I want you to understand the basis from whence this truth came. So that your confidence will not only be on the confidence in the teacher, but on the validity of the truth that you have heard. So you know that the truths that are being told are the ones gotten by revelation. By revelation. And they are not cunning. They are not fables. They are not opinions of men. They are not opinions of men. Neither are they ideas of denomination. Now it was Paul that said, I know whom I believed and am persuaded. I know whom I believe, who I believe, and I'm persuaded. It's not just I know what I believe. I know the source. And there is a conviction in me that he is able. I don't just know the truth or the words that are spoken. I know the person. He said, I know who. He didn't say, I know what. I know who. So there is a person that controls the truth. So we must understand that when the Bible said knowing the truth, it's talking about knowing a person. For Jesus is the person, the truth. He's the truth. So as believers, it's important that we build conviction. That we not only believe because we trust the speaker. But we must align with the systems of the kingdom to place our faith in God and the integrity of his word. I'm speaking on the mystery of kingdom advantage. The mystery of kingdom advantages. That's what I'm speaking on. So in, in one of Jesus's, in one of Jesus's, Jesus's mentorship section, he was teaching on the Beatitudes and was teaching them the concept of the kingdom and how to live life based on the directives of the kingdom. Different from that which they have known all this while in their life, according to the Roman government. And when Jesus got to chapter 13 of the book of Matthew, chapter 13 of the book of Matthew, verse 11, he said, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Hmm. Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of, the kingdom of heaven. So it has been given to you to come into a place of comprehension. Where you understand a body of spiritual knowledge that is called the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And somebody may ask, what's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Now from my perspective, I believe that the kingdom of God represents every sphere where the influence of God can reach. And that includes heaven, earth and hell. 
every sphere that the kingdom of God can reach, the kingdom of God can cover, and that represents heaven, it represents earth, and it represents hell. Now, the Bible said, where can I hide from your presence, O God? That is the kingdom of heaven spreading across every sphere. If you hide on earth, he will find you. You hide in hell, he is there. You hide in heaven, of course, that's his dwelling place. He said, where can I hide from your presence? So God's presence stretches to every realm and every domain of existence. But the kingdom of heaven is that um, portion of the kingdom of God where in experience the life and the culture of heaven have been allowed to find expression. The kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of God where in experience the life, the culture of heaven have been allowed to find expression. So it's saying that there are mysteries that makes heaven the way it is. And that the dexterity and the order in heaven is not just because God is there. No. There is a body of spiritual knowledge that makes the result we find in heaven. There is a body of spiritual knowledge that makes us to see the kind of results that we find in heaven. There's a body of spiritual knowledge. There's a body of spiritual knowledge. Hmm. It then shows us that unto you the inhabitants of the earth it has been given that we can also come into the comprehension of the truth that govern the heaven so that you can reproduce the same within the territory. That there is a system in heaven that governs heaven. Now because I am a believer, I can tap into that system and begin to use the same governments to operate on the earth in everything that concerns me, even including the business that I do. This is what it means. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. So when we handle this truth rightly. We are able to reproduce the power. The prosperity. The grace. And the order that we find in heaven. That there is a kind of prosperity in heaven. There is a kind of excellence in heaven. There is a kind of grace in heaven. There is a kind of power that operates in the heaven. But that it is not meant to be in the heavens alone. It can be on the earth. So he says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That I can replicate everything that happens in the heavens on the earth. I can replicate the dimension of prosperity that happens in the heavens in the earth realm. That I can replicate the dimension of order and excellence that is seen in heaven on the earth realm. That I can replicate, replicate the kind of power oppression in heaven upon the earth. Why? I am able to download the system of government that operates in the heaven. And having this understanding will help us walk freely in dominion. Please hear me. That nobody in life rises by mistake. Nothing on this earth happens by mistake. Everything is programmed by a certain advantage. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. The Bible said redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Please hear me today that your wisdom is to have dominion over time. Your wisdom is to have dominion over time. So whoever or who, whoever can walk in the secret that gives you advantage over time. 
will mean that you are walking in wisdom. A man who can walk in the secrets that gives advantage over time is a man who is walking in wisdom. That the greatest gift that God can give a man outside salvation is the gift of time. The gift of time. The gift of time. The unit of destiny is time. Just as you have units in your in your your light bills and your 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 phones, the units, ladies and gentlemen, of destiny is time, and whatever affects your time affects your destiny. You walk in wisdom when you have mastered time. Have you ever met a man who is dying? Have you ever met a man who had an accident or is in the ICT unit in the hospital? If you meet such a man, ask him, what do you want? He will not tell you, give me money. He will not ask you for houses or for a visa. He will not ask you for, for an opportunity to grow in life and become big. No. The greatest thing he will ask you, he will tell you, I need more time to live my life. Time is powerful. The real asset of a believer is time. Whatever attacks your time has attacked your life. It takes time to build anything that will last in life. It takes time to build a profitable relationship. It takes time to build godly children. It takes time to build a standard marriage. It takes time to build a great business, a great conglomerate. It takes time to build a man's destiny. It takes time to build capacity in knowledge. Time. Time is the greatest asset of a believer. Hmm. But one thing the devil does, the devil is very aware that time is important. So he helps you to live a fruitless life by interrupting your time. The secret of the kingdom amongst other things Helps you to exercise dominion over time. So that you can redeem time because the days, the Bible says, are evil. Meaning, you can be a first class graduate. And because someone had a rift with your father many years ago. You will begin to struggle and struggle for 15 years without a job. Why? Because there was a voice that spoke over you to punish you and your time is is choked by evil hmm. because somebody was angry with your father and said to make this man cry in life i will stop the progress of his son so you graduate with a first class best graduating student in your time and for 10 to 15 years, there is nothing to show. Why? Because somebody interrupted the time of your greatness. Hmm. Why do we want to prosper in life? Prosperity is not about showing to people that you have it. Prosperity has a unique ability to redeem time. The time wastage that poverty brings is dangerous. If your reason of hating poverty is because you don't have money, you are not serious yet. You should hate it for the time wastage it brings into your destiny. The Bible speaking said, Oh, teach us to number our days. To number our time. Teach us. Not because we want to die. So that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So by default. Ladies and gentlemen. By default. Every man's life carries a disadvantage by default. Every human being's life carries a disadvantage. You are the one who begins to introduce systems of advantage into your life as you go on in life. And one of the systems of advantage is salvation. It's a system of advantage. Salvation is a system of advantage. 
For example, you say, I come from a family where there's no single advantage. But now because I have followed Christ, I've accepted his life, and I understand God, and I've followed his word, I begin to introduce systems of advantage that begin to correct the anomalies I meet in my family. Because in every family there are anomalies. In every family there are certain dimensions of anomalies. There are anomalies of delay. There are anomalies of stagnation. Ah! That the first person in your family who built a house, built the house at the age of 62, is not a testimony. I'm sorry, but it's not a testimony. So because you know God, you begin to introduce systems of advantage into your life, and people are wowed when they look at your life. That's why we have things like restoration. It is a mystery of advantage. So it says, I will restore. <laughs> yes. We have things like restoration. It's an advantage. He said, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. The wasted years that the locusts have eaten. The ones that the caterpillar has swallowed. He said, I will give you the system of advantage called restoration so that you will rise above the people that this thing has affected. Hmm. He said, I will restore the years, not the things. So God restores time. He said, I will restore the years, not the things. The moment he restores the years, things begin to fall in place. Things begin to fall in place. Woo. Because when you lose time, you have lost all. I will restore the years. 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 God is a restorer of years. He's a restorer of time. Powerful restorer of time. Restorer of time. Can I have two people, please? Two people. I need two people quickly. Two people, two people, two people. One, two, one, two. Thank you. Now, I'd like us to look at this. Look at this. I want to show us an illustration. Now look at these three people walking. Come, come this way. Face this way. Now look at these three people who are walking slowly. Let's walk slowly. Now, suddenly, this one stops. Move. He keeps moving slowly. Then there is a restriction upon this person's life. You know what we call this? When this man's life is restricted, the human being will call it delay. Am I talking? The human being will call it delay. So he is delayed for about 10 years. And the other person has gone far in life. The moment that delay restriction is removed, he begins to walk. Now, please listen to me. Listen very clearly. He begins to walk. Now, that thing you see, the moment he begins to move, when that delay is taken off, is called progress. It's not restoration. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Good. They all began the journey together. Somewhere along the line, there was a restriction in his life. He became stagnant and he was moving. Somehow, again, the limitation was removed. He began to move. But he has not caught up with him. Even if he catches up with him, it is progress. It is not restoration. But let me explain to you what restoration means. Let me explain. Because even in his progress, he is still delayed. Why is he delayed? Because they started together. He has gone in his movement. He has not caught up with him. Am I making any sense here? He has not caught up with him yet. 
He has not. But there is a provision. There is a provision in the kingdom that can pick this guy from where he is and pull him ahead of this guy and become in front. It is called a quantum leap. It is called restoration. It is called restoration. And it is a kingdom advantage. Thank you. It's a kingdom advantage. It's a kingdom advantage. That God picks him and drops him ahead. That when you now look at his life, you do not see a reason to find a delay. Because all the years that the canker worm ate was compressed in one. That when such a man begins to tell you that I have suffered in my life, oh, you look at him and you laugh. Because what you are seeing does not show that he has ever suffered. That's when we say, that's when we say, they, they both got married the same day. And one year after, the one who had gone ahead gives birth to a child. Two years after, gives birth to another. Two years after, gives birth to another. And yet, this guy is still struggling. See, going for checkup, taking drugs, and nothing to show. And nine years have gone, ten years. Suddenly, somehow, the first delivery that comes is a triplet. A compression of all the delays in one. That the year the babies are coming out, the year, the same year, somebody gives him the key of a full house. The same year, somebody comes and says, I just feel like dashing you and your wife a car. Take your own, take your own. They cannot explain it. Nobody can explain. It is called a quantum leap. It's a restoration. I will restore. Not the things, the years. The moment the years are restored, the things will answer. The things will answer. These are the mysteries of the kingdom that help us in life. And that's why the Bible says, for we know. For we know. They don't know, but we know. We know. They don't know, but we that are kingdom people, we know. We know that all things, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, we know that all things, all things, all things, we know. They work together for the good to them that love the Lord and them that are called. So we have been called of God and grafted into his glory. And for such who are in this glory, the concept of being disadvantaged does not exist because we are shrouded in the mysteries of the kingdom and the advantages that follows it. And they are all for our eternal benefits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why when we do not trust God, it hurts him. <laughs> when we do not trust God, it hurts him because he has given us too many keys to live in a high realm. A high realm. More than men in this world. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. I'd like us to see that scripture. He said, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that command that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Please note that something left your life does not mean it has left yet. Can I say that again? That something left your life does not mean it has left the earth. That an opportunity left your life does not mean it has left the earth. It is somewhere you can get it back. Oh my. Somebody is not catching me. <laughs> it is somewhere and you can get it back. Nah. You can get it back. You can. You can get it back. Meaning that there is a system you can apply. That will make it come back. Somebody say system. 
Come on, say system. Shout it one more time. System. There is a system. There's an advantage. You can apply. And the thing that left will come back. Hmm. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he asked, where fell it? <laughs> where fell it? And a formula was applied. And a metal head came up. It only left their hand. It was still on the earth. It didn't go. So stop mourning over the things that left your life some years ago. There are advantages and systems you can apply. And what left will return. As long as it gives you joy, it will come back. It will come back. Ah. Our kingdom is one that strives on knowledge. And Hosea entered into a lamentation in chapter 4 verse 6. And he said, my people are destroyed. Because they lack knowledge. The biggest problem of the body of Christ is that we know little. We don't know much of what we should know. So we do not know the principles to begin to apply and live life by. To begin to enjoy the advantages of the kingdom. Mm. It takes knowledge to reign. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. I like reading this from the amplified version. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Then he said, rise to a new life. Ah, shine. He said what? Be radiant with the glory of the Lord for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Hmm. One of the advantages I want to deal with is the law of value. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. The law of value. Which means that before the gift came, he had no room. According to the scripture. Come on, talk to me. Am I correct? He say a man's gift maketh room. So, a man without gift has no room. Uh -huh. Before the gift came, he had no room. He had no room. He had no room. I'll show you something very profound. Very, very profound. Can I have about four persons? Can I have another four persons? Four persons. Just stand behind me. Four persons. Quickly. 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 Let me show you something. Are we complete? One more. I need one more person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand together. Just compress yourselves together. Beautiful. Now, please note. I like us to call this the banquet of greatness. The banquet of greatness. That these are great people standing. Great destinies. Great lives. Great empires. But I do not have a place there. Please hear me today because I feel I'm talking to somebody right now. These are great futures. Great empires. Great conglomerates. I also desire to be one. Yet, I do not have a place in their circle. This is how life treats a lot of people. You look at a place you love to be. You can't be there because you do not have the advantage that takes you there. Ah. <sighs> there is no space. Everybody is compressed and locked up. No space. No space. Not even one. But value is seen as a measure of usefulness. To be valuable is to be perceived. To be useful as far as a territory is concerned. So the Bible told us to reign. We should be wise as serpent. But be calm as a dove. That the serpent is not the friendly reptile yet. God himself said, borrow wisdom from the serpent. Your value is not just a measure of your skill. Value is also virtue. 
Virtue is a measure of your closeness to Christ. Whenever you contend to sustain the character of Christ, it becomes difficult to ignore you. What the world is looking for in men is what only Christ can give. You are valuable to the degree to which you walk in partnership to the spirit of God to sustain the character traits that make you reflect Christ. There is an intelligence you can sustain from the character of Christ. There is an intelligence you can sustain from the character of Christ. By which you can detect rebellion within a territory. God has given you a territory. If you do not tap into the wisdom of the heavens as it is in heaven, you cannot. God was sitting in his throne in heaven. He didn't get up. Yet he was able to judge the rebellion of Satan. How? Because there is a system that controls the heavens. Hmm. Rebellion is dangerous. Let me just digress a little. Rebellion is a destroyer. If you have a man who is rebellious in your business, take the person off. You are, you are a pastor. You have somebody who is rebellious in your church. In your Push the person out. There is no... See, listen. It is not... It's a satanic spirit. Rebellion is pregnant. It will give birth to something else. You must not downplay your closeness to the character of Christ. Because in life, you will get to a point... We are the skill you have. Everybody have it. You will get to a point in life that the certificate you have, everybody have it. That the connection you have, people have even more than you. But there is one thing that can stand you out. is your character and relationship with Christ. That's what stands you out. The oil upon your head is what differentiates you from the crowd. And the world we are in, men are looking for the people that possess the character of Christ. Am I talking here? So you know you are valuable by who pursues you. Ha. I say that again. You can count your value by the kind of people that run after you. The kind of people that run after you is a report card that shows to me that you are valued. So when in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 the Bible was speaking there and he said a man's gift a man's gift can I say this quickly to someone here that there is an intelligence you can sustain from the character of Christ. There is. So he said, a man's gift make it room. Make it room. Are we still together? A man's gift does what? Make it room. Now can I ask you a question? Looking at these destinies and these territories that are standing, is there room anywhere? Talk to me. Do you find room anywhere? Then the Bible says, a man's gift make it room. This is what it means. That when the gift of a man shows forth, that gift will create a room, shift everybody and find a place by force. That's what a man's gift does. And listen, this cannot happen when you do not have a tight relationship with the spirit. There are advantages that makes your gift come alive. Ah! Do falaka bakashka dadi. Siporati akabarakati zizi. There are advantages. Mm. That unbelievers are looking for people who have this advantage. They know who to follow, they know who to listen to. They know. They know. Hmm. Can I say this to you? There are certain skills you have. Only the rich will look for you. There are certain skills you have. Only the poor will look for you. There are certain skills you have. Only the educated will look for you. There are certain skills you have. 
Only your tribesmen will look for you. <laughs> Am I talking here? But there are certain gifts and skills you have. All men, all territory will look for you. And I stand here to proclaim in the name of the Christ upon every life that hears my voice, may you enter such a dimension of skill in the name of Jesus. Hmm. The kingdom of operates on a reward system. Thank you. Thank you. The kingdom of heaven operates on a reward system. A reward system. It is robbery to expect reward when you are not valuable. So reward follows value. Stop claiming the wealth of Bill Gates. Stop it. Stop it. Stop claiming the wealth of Dangote. No, he can't. That's not worth transfer. Stop it. I receive now. I pull it now. I drag it. It won't come. Reward follows value. See, listen to me. Value commands a dimension of currency in your life. Hmm. Reward follows value. Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Di brado koskavrande keshka parakazuske. Bero siya labahatash kadiba. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. What is that that is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. A rod. Verse 17. If you are a believer, I'd like you to read verse 17 with me. One to go. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand. Wherewith thou shalt what? Do signs. Do signs. Please listen to me. When you stand before Pharaoh, you are not allowed to speak. You can't talk too much. No. Let what you carry do the speaking. You didn't hear me. When you stand before Pharaoh, you can't have the opportunity to talk. Seeing him alone will make you dumb if case not taken. But you must carry something that will talk even when you are silent. He said, take the rod in thy hand. With the rod, do signs. He didn't say, with your words. With what? I didn't hear that. Come on, say it loud. Say it loud. Say it loud. Lift your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, open my eyes to know the rod I have. And when you read the scripture, the Bible told us that Moses uttered not a word. He only dropped it on the ground. He became a snake. He held it by the tail. He became a rod. People don't listen to you when you don't have value. Reward follows value. Reward follows value. Hmm. One of the principles of dominion is that you must bet something out of you that must immortalize your impact. That must immortalize your impact. Let me explain a dimension of dominion that may shock you today. Outside on television and pictures, how many of you have seen Bill Gates face to face? How many of you have seen him face to face outside on television and picture? Anybody? Okay, nobody. But how, many of you, how many of you know that Bill Gates stays in your house? Huh? He lives with you. <laughs> how many of you have seen Mark Zuckerberg? That's the name. Have you ever seen him face to face? Flesh and blood? Huh? But he lives with you. Even now as I'm talking, he is with you. <laughs> you angrily drive him out of your house, you bring him back. Come on, talk to me. Am I making sense? Somebody say value. value. Hmm. Some of you have made up your mind that we never drink Coca-Cola again. You stop drinking for three weeks. 
After three weeks, you went to bring Coca-Cola back with your own hand. Nobody forced you. Somebody say value. I, I can't hear you say value. value. Say it loud. Say value. value. They don't get angry with you. They are on their own. You buy them with your money. Value. Lift your right hand wherever you are. Hearing the sound of my voice and looking at me and say these words after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to be valuable. I obtain grace to stand out. I obtain grace to be unique. This land is very good for me. The increase is for me. Because I'm a man of value. Say it loud, amen. For you to value. For you to have value that spreads around every sphere. You must sustain an intelligence for that communication with God. And it calls for deep study. You must expand your knowledge base. It's not an impartation. It is truth that is bought. I can cook very well. My question is this. Who is eating your food? There is a man who is cooking, sir. And it is women who sell tomatoes and pepper in the market. Bus drivers and conductors that eat their food. But there is another woman who is cooking somewhere. It is senators and governors that eat their food. No, you didn't hear me now. I know how to make clothes. I'm an expert. It was an Italian designer that taught me. My question is this. The clothes you are making, who is wearing it? Who is wearing the clothes you are making? There are people who are making clothes that is presidents of nations that wear their clothes. Listen, until kings look for you, you are not existing. I'm sorry, I apologize. Until kings search for you, you are not there. Listen, it is easy to rise when you contend to be exceptional. When you do life or business like everyone else, you become irreplaceable. You're just there. Nobody will notice you. The moment you begin to do life, do business like, like every other person, you are just part of us. Now we, we, that becomes a language. To be valuable means giving an impression that you are not easily replaceable. Make up your mind. To be valuable. Make up your mind to be valuable. That the day you talk to your destiny helpers, you won't need to repeat yourself twice. Once will be enough. There are not too many valuable people on the face of the earth, but there are many people on the earth. Did you hear what I said? There are not too many valuable people on the earth, but there are many people on the earth. Which of this group do you belong? Mm. Which of this group do you belong? Which of this group do you belong? Which of this group do you belong? Value. 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 I'd like you to begin to pray. Lord, make my life of value. The grace to become valuable. To become the one that cannot be easily replaced. I'd like you to turn it into a prayer. That in the name of Jesus, I tap into the advantage of value. The Paco Koshkabada Hatia, Le Protie Kento Salata, 
endele kushaka prato keskubra. The long secret kete barata. I tap into the grace of value. Lord, I tap into the grace that I become one of them that cannot be replaced. Lift your voice and turn it to prayer. The gift of a man make it room. Lord, breathe upon my gift. Give my gift a touch. Give my gift a dimension of value. Yes. It's an advantage of the kingdom. It's an advantage of the kingdom. It's an advantage of the kingdom. I lay hold on this advantage. I lay hold on this advantage. Jesus, I lay hold on this advantage. Let there be a turnaround in my life. Let there be a turnaround in my life. I stand out. I stand tall. I stand out and I stand tall. Lift your voice in prayer. Oh, rush. Katapa katalapaka. That in the banquet of greatness, I will be found. My gift will make a way. 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 Sakroteka parakato in kwatata pandeke tokata idelebeko sipreketa la da parakati zelebeko zendo koteke topakatiza li paron salata tadesh. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your word has shown to us today, Father, that every man must live by the advantage of the kingdom. That life will become difficult and become tight when we live life outside your advantage. That you are the one who has the ability to restore time. And the moment time is restored, things will follow. So in the name of Jesus, I bless your children. And I speak forth upon the lives of everyone hearing me now. That by God from this day forward, the portals of heaven will open for you. You begin to enjoy the advantages of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you begin to enjoy the advantages of your gift making a way. The advantages of value. I speak value upon your life upon your gifting, upon your business. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.